Hey Timothy, I watch your YouTube videos a lot and was looking for advice on what to do in this day and age with so many false religions and versions of Christianity. I'm at a stage in my life that I wish to join a church, but do not want to choose the wrong one. So which church should you choose if you're looking for a church? That's what we're going to look at in this video. I want to say I'm very grateful to this person for asking this question on Twitter. And for the record, I did respond to this person on Twitter, but I thought it would be good to do a video on YouTube to address this particular question. How do I find a good church? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there in the uh, YouTube world, maybe people that stumble upon this video or are watching my videos that have this same question. And I recognize what the person is saying here. It is very overwhelming <laughs> when you're looking at uh, the options that are out there. You're a person maybe who has come to faith in Christ. You want to be a, a Christian who's following the Lord, but you don't know, where do I go to church? What's, what's the right church to choose? There's so many different options, and uh, I understand that can be overwhelming, really, and really hard to know what to do. And as the person said, there's also a lot of false things out there, and you don't want to get sucked into something that's not right. So I answered the question as briefly, succinctly, and clearly as I could on Twitter, which Twitter is not really the best place to explain these sorts of things. So I also mentioned, and I'll mention it here, if you want to discuss with me the particulars of your situation, where you live, what your background is, just email me at a fresh perspective at gmail.com and I'd be happy to talk with you more about looking for a church where you live. But I thought this question was a really good follow-up to the previous video that I did recently where I was talking about the subject of faith alone and the different perspectives that people have on that idea of faith alone in Christ. And I shared uh, some of what the Bible says about that, my thoughts on that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to be sharing my perspective. I think this issue really, again, ties into what we're dealing with today, that, that there are different perspectives people have. And so it's really hard. Uh, I know when I give my perspective here, there are going to be people who probably disagree. And what I want to say is that, remember, this channel is called A Frisch Perspective. And so I am going to give my view and my thoughts on this subject. If you want to share some things in the comment section, that's fine, as long as it's meant to further discussion. That being said, I know with controversial topics like this, it's very tempting for people to want to write an entire essay in the comments because they disagree with what I'm saying. And uh, I really discourage you from doing that. Uh, it's okay if we have some discussion, people give some different views, but try to keep your comments succinct and to the point, and also make sure that they're really about trying to further discussion and being edifying to others. I think that's really important. Of course, I love comments from people that agree with me, and if you want to tell me that uh, you think what I'm saying here is good, it's always great to hear that encouragement. But really what I always want to do is share my view on things and then people in the comment section can give some of their thoughts and interact in the comments. So let's get to it. What is my approach to choosing a church when it comes to all of these choices that are out there? How do you choose a good church? One thing I want to say in preface to this is to uh, just really give an acknowledgement here that in American evangelicalism, there is really a, a danger that I see and, and really a weakness that I, I must admit this is a real problem in, in certain cases where people feel that church is not really that important or it's somehow secondary. But if you read in the Bible, what you will see is that church is obviously integral to that idea of following Jesus in your life because he makes you a part of his family, the, the family of God, part of that community. So when you put your faith in Christ, in one sense you already are part of the church, you're part of God's people. But you see in the New Testament that those believers who were part of the church met locally in a 
local church, a group of believers that gathered together regularly and they worshiped the Lord together and they lived their lives in a way that was very uh, family oriented, that family of God. So it's the local church expression that we're talking about here. It's how do I find a group of Christians that I want to uh, do life together with? I want to follow the Lord with these people in faith, in faith in Christ. So these are very important things. On one extreme, unfortunately, you do have people who downplay the importance of church, but church actually is integral to our life as Christians. It's very important. On the other hand, I think you see on the, on the other extreme, and I think this is where this one extreme comes from, it's kind of pulling away from the other extreme. The other extreme are people who say that the way to have a relationship with God is through their specific church. And I think there's a real danger there when we have that mentality. There are churches out there that say, in essence, if you really want to have a, re a right relationship with God, you've got to come through our kind of a church. And I think we have to be really careful about that mentality, be very cautious about that. The way that we have a relationship with God is actually through the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, his work in our lives by faith. But yes, we are now, as people who believe in Jesus Christ, part of the body of Christ. And we want to find other Christians who we can have that togetherness with uh, and live our lives in a practical way with. So it is important. Church is very important, and you see that in the New Testament. But we have to be careful of these extremes that I'm talking about. So let's get to the specific question, and I have three things here that I want to share with you, but I want to frame it in a little bit of a different way than how we tend to think about this kind of a question. A lot of people will ask, how do I find the right church? And my answer to this is actually similar to how I talk to people about how to find someone that you're looking for to date and maybe potentially marry. Instead of looking for the right person, because that is extremely overwhelming if you're looking at all the people that are out there, how do I find the right person? I always tell people, look for the right kind of person, because that'll really help you to narrow things down a little bit in your mind and also prevent you from maybe making some unwise decisions. Because if you're looking for the right person, you tend to go based on maybe certain subjective things about how you feel or maybe just, you know, the, the, the situation that you're encountering and, okay, maybe this is the right person. So I think a more principled and wise way to approach it is how do I find the right kind of person? And it's the same with church. Instead of looking for the right church and maybe going based on how it makes you feel or the experience that you have, when you initially encounter a church, I would say what you really wanna be looking for is the right kind of church, because that'll give you some principles and guidelines that will really help you make a wise decision when it comes to choosing a church. So here are the three things to help you to find the right kind of church. The first one is look for a church that is gospel preaching. And the way that I clarify this when I say it's a gospel preaching church, is that it's a church that proclaims the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that it's a church that teaches salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. Salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone. That's from Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, where it talks about the fact that we're saved by grace through faith. So that's one characteristic that I think is so important because when you look in the New Testament and you see what the early churches were dealing with, one of the things Paul had to deal with a lot was, are they being faithful to the gospel? So for example, if you read the book of Galatians, you can see there was a temptation for people that were Christians to get sucked into all these different kinds of rules and regulations, particularly with Judaism. But it's so easy for people to get sucked into different rules and regulations to somehow kind of add to that idea of faith and uh, living in right relationship with God. So Paul always wants to bring it back to the gospel that we're justified by faith and that the way that we live our lives is really the fruit of what God has done in our hearts. And so 
we want a gospel that is based on that. We want to be very careful about people that are adding or in any way uh, skewing what the gospel itself says. So that's the first thing, a gospel preaching church. The second is that it's Bible teaching. You want a church where scripture is taught faithfully. And so if you're going to this church and you notice, first of all, that maybe they're not really using the Bible very much, or they're just kind of using it in a surface way, and really kind of just giving their own message, you want to be very careful about that. But the other thing you want to be careful about are, are churches that are very sectarian, and they're basically saying, oh, all those other churches out there that the other Christians go to, they're not right. We're the only ones who really have it right. Uh, our specific little group here. We, we've got it right. Be very careful of that sectarian mentality. If they're faithfully teaching the scripture, I think you'll see that there's going to be a lot of agreement with other Christians, and you will find Christians historically as well as today in, in various places who have uh, real unity uh, based in the scripture. And so I guess another way I would put this or kind of caution what I'm saying is that you, you will have churches out there that, you know, they say they're teaching the Bible, but maybe they're they're teaching about God, like the Trinity, for example. They'll really they're they're not Trinitarian. And I think when you look at the scripture and you see a lot of what it says and you look at how Christians have looked at this for centuries and centuries, you can see that the Trinity is scriptural teaching. That would just be one example of where you need to be careful of groups that are kind of pulling you in a sectarian direction. So make sure that they're sound and they're teaching the scripture faithfully. And the third characteristic you want to look for is Christ-like living. And the way that I would describe this and what to look for is the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit, Paul says, is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. If these are the kinds of traits that are exuding from a group of Christians, that is a really good sign. On the other hand, if these are not the traits that you're seeing, if you're not really seeing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control, if you're not seeing those things in a group of people, it's really a red flag. Um, so there's a caution here. When you join a church, you want to make sure it's not a church that is controlling or abusive. You want to be careful of that. You also want to make sure, though, that it's not permissive. The fruit of the Spirit that Paul gives there in Galatians 5 is actually in contrast to the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are sinful. So if they have the fruit of the Spirit in their lives, they're not engaging or promoting sin. And we see that in Christ. Christ, on one hand, was very gracious and loving and kind and showed that um, ability to invite and accept people. On the other hand, he didn't condone sin. And he was willing to draw lines and show what was truly right, what was truly wrong. So that should be the characteristic of a church that we want to be part of, is a church that is Christ-like in its outlook. So let me just recap. Those are the three things I think that you should look for when you're looking for the right kind of church, which is really what you want to do. Look for the right kind of church. It should be a gospel preaching, Bible teaching, and Christ-like living community of believers. And if that's what you find, I think you're really on the right track. Again, if you have any questions that you want to follow up with, feel free to leave general questions in the comment section. If you have specific questions about your situation, where you live, and some things you're grappling with, feel free to email me at a perspective at gmail.com, and I will try to answer questions as best as I possibly can. I hope that what I've talked about here has been helpful, and for those of you who do already go to a good church, I'm sure there are a lot of things I've said here that you find to be true and really resonate with you. But for those of you who maybe haven't found a church, you're looking, hopefully this will guide you in a, in a helpful way. And it's possible there are people out there that realize maybe I'm not going to the best church and I really need to find something that's better. 
And so think about these things that I've talked about in this video. And I think if you read the scripture for yourself, look at the New Testament, you'll see these principles that I'm talking about coming out.